welcome Rebecca here. Well, it took me a minute to design this little pouch. I want to share with you a double zip pouch because I can't really have enough of these zip pouches. Okay, so the errors of my way. I'll share because I don't want you to repeat the same mistake. And that's why you're watching this, I guess, I hope. So as you make this pout, let's rewind. I screwed up. <laughs> Up here in the mountains, we've had a lot of snow and I just wanted to bring some spring around. So if you guys are anywhere where there is a lot of snow, maybe surrounding yourself with something that's a little bit springy, that would be great. This pouch features box bottom, a front panel pocket that is made out of vinyl. Great to display your pens, sewing tools. <laughs> Let me tell you about what size it is. Eight inches across. 10 inches in height. There's binding at the top, which we're gonna hand stitch in place. I'm gonna show you how to do this technique with the inset zipper. I decided that I would practice free motion quilting, so I used some batting to give it some body. If you don't have a machine that will do free motion quilting, there's no problem. You could actually do like a cross hatch or just whatever your heart desires on that. The first one that I did, I didn't interface it just because I wanted to play with it, but I did a little patchwork top to it. On this, I also did the vinyl all the way up, so the pocket is actually a big, large pocket. So on the one today, I'm actually going to be showing you the one that is just a pocket on the bottom. So let your heart get creative. seam ripper, a rotary cutter, a pair of snips, some non-fabric scissors useful for cutting through zipper tape, and some fabric scissors. Needle, hand needles. The binding part at the top of this bag is going to be stitched on. Thread magic isn't necessary, it just helps um, against tangling. Measuring tape, a Teflon foot is helpful because we're going to be working with the clear vinyl. If you don't have that, you can always use your presser foot and just put a piece of scotch tape on the bottom of it and just cut it through so that your needle can pass through. Some tissue paper or one of these mylar plastic bags can help with the gliding of the vinyl on the bed of your machine. Either works well. I've also used a clear chopping mat that works well. The mat and ruler are helpful for cutting your pieces of fabric straight, but again, not necessary. If you don't have them, you can just draw on your fabric, trace out the shape, and then cut it with your scissors. And an iron and ironing board, clips, a lighter to singe the ends of your zipper tape or zipper pins, some marking utensils, as well as a stiletto is all full. A stiletto is all <laughs> a stiletto is also helpful for guiding your fabric through the sewing machine. In this case, I'm using zipper by the yard. We'll need some interfacing. So for this bag, I actually used the fusible fleece, the low loft by Pellon. Today I'm going to be using the ShapeFlex interfacing for both the exterior panels as well as the lining. I am going to be using one 12 inch zipper. It's going to be extra, a little bit extra in length. So that's going to be for the top zip is the 12 inches. And then this front panel zipper. I cut the length of nine and one quarter. Okay, so for today I'm using 100% cotton and I'm going to use two squares. Cut 12 inches by 12 inches. That's for your exterior fabric and both of them are interfaced with the SF101. You'll need another two squares, also 12 inches by 12 inches interfaced with the SF 101. Okay, so you'll also need a piece of vinyl and cut nine inches by 12 inches. Three zipper tabs measuring two and three quarter inches by two inches. 
You'll need one piece of binding that measures one inch by 10 inches. Okay, so you'll also need a piece of binding that is one and a quarter inches in depth and 20 inches in length. So the first step is getting our panels to the right size. So I'm gonna take one of the 12 by 12 inch squares and I'm going to flip it over so you can see a little bit better. If you have a directional print, just pay attention to that measuring in one inch from either side at the top. And I'm just using a pencil. And then you're gonna connect the corner that measures 12 inches cornered. And you're gonna repeat for all four of the squares, the two exterior panels and the two lining panels. And you're just gonna cut along the line for all of the panels. And I need to change out my blade. Okay, so what I've done for the zippers is I just took it to the sewing machine and just back tacked, a, a sewed and back tacked across it a couple of times to make sure that I didn't lose the zipper head and get it to fly off. Now on the long one, you'll only want to do that to one side, the opposite end of the zipper from the zip tab when it's closed. You're gonna grab two of the zipper tabs. I'm going to draw one quarter inch in from the long edge on both sides. It's been windy here all day. At one point it sounded like motorbike racing by. Then I'm going to take it to the ironing board and just use the markings as a guide. All right, so grab the shorter zipper and you're gonna flip the tab over. Right side of the fabric is facing up. And then you're going to take your zipper and you're going to place it right side facing down. And you want to line up the zipper coil with the crease that you have made once you've pressed it. Somewhat center it, sew a half of an inch in. I'm gonna use about a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And you can run another row of stitching to secure the edges. Okay, so if your vinyl's a little crinkly, the simple fix is to just warm up your ironing board and then you're gonna lay your vinyl on and it helps take out the wrinkles. Okay, so next we're gonna attach the zipper to the vinyl. So grab your vinyl and I'm just finding the center up and then I'm going to find the center of the zipper. And to find the center, you're just basing it on where you just attach the zipper tabs. So you want those to match. And I'm gonna put a little pencil mark on the back side of the zipper. Center, align the marks to the center point of the vinyl. And you're gonna need some clover clips for this. And I'm gonna just take that mark off now that I know where it is. And if your zipper ends have kind of splayed open, you can just kind of make sure that they're rearranged to where you like them. And then you can always clip it to kind of hold it together. On my original one, I actually added a second row of stitching so that it stayed together. But I wanted to see what it would be like to just have one row of stitching. I have a narrow foot on my sewing machine, but if you need to switch to a zipper foot, you can do that. Three and a half millimeter stitch length. Now I'm gonna back stitch beginning and end. And push it, the zipper up the right way. So when you're stitching along, you may want to go a little bit closer to the edge of the zipper tape head to give you more room. Uh, so maybe stitching down at about an eighth of an inch. That way when you pull it open, you'll have more of the zipper tape to be able to top stitch. I hope that made sense. 
So I'm actually going to be trying to use this narrower foot. You may have a zipper foot, but that's gonna let me glide along and get pretty close to that. I'm keeping it on a 3.5 millimeter stitch length. <laughs> I think I got my zipper on backwards. Oh well. <laughs> So messed up on that. <laughs> It'll be all right. We're just gonna go with that, okay? <laughs> okay, so next I'm going to work on doing the binding. It actually works out because I'm left-handed, so for me it'll work out. For you guys, you just wanna make sure that when you're doing this, if you want an opening from right from left to right that you actually have the zipper flipped <laughs> the right way. Okay, so you're gonna grab your binding piece and you're going to press it in half. Press the raw edges in towards the center. You're going to just fold it in half again, finding the center point. Centering the little zipper tape and the binding. And you're going to nestle it in. And you could get it fairly close to the zipper teeth if you'd like, or you could move it further back, depending on the look that you're wanting. I think on this one, I think I'm going to actually try to butt it as close to the teeth as possible since I love me some polka dots. Okay, so I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and stitch all the way across. Okay, so next you're gonna grab your zipper panel and one of your exterior panels. And for this, you just want to make sure that the distance from the top and that it's even two and a quarter down from the top and going to trim the clear vinyl to the front vinyl i'm just going to put a few clips to hold the panel together and move the zip over stitch at about a quarter of an inch in from the edge using a 3.5 millimeter stitch length and going across the bottom and coming back up and stopping. And that's just to kind of make this whole panel a solid unit. Grab the other exterior panel, put the two panel pieces right sides together and don't worry if it's slightly off, can always trim it up. And I just moved the zipper just out of the way. Oh, I'm getting excited. <laughs> I think it's gonna turn out really well. It's, that's the fun thing about sewing is you can really just pick out fabrics and materials that you are drawn to and get to create things that you love. Okay, so I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and stitch at 3 eighths of an inch in from the edge, down, across, up, leaving the top open. Stitch the beginning and end. boxing the corners I'm going to use one inch square and I'm going to make sure that I go from the stitching line not from the edge set that aside and you're going to be grabbing two lining pieces and you're going to repeat by placing them right sides together I like to start off at the 3 8 of the inch bigger seam allowance as I go down Crease it by another quarter of an inch to make sure that the lining fits snugly okay, and at the bottom I'm going to do three quarters of an inch oops I got a little bit drunk on that one <laughs> try, try that again a bit my mom used to say, oh, drunk again. <laughs> so now I'm going to do some trimming of the seam allowance. I like to leave it nice and wide at the top so that I have something to work with as far as splaying it open. You guys see all the snow outside? <laughs> okay, then back to boxing. Oh, 
Alrighty. Now you're gonna take your main panel and flip it the right side out. Okay, so the errors of my way. I'll share because I don't want you to repeat the same mistakes. And that's why you're watching this, I guess, I hope. So as you make this pout, let's rewind. I screwed up <laughs> again. And so first of all, you don't have to turn it the right side out just yet because you have to box the corners first before you flip it the right side out. Screw up number two. <laughs> I forgot to top stitch across the top of the binding and therefore <laughs> this is not a pocket at all. It's just a decorative kind of opening, which is kind of actually kind of cute, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's my daughter. Okay, so what you want to do is make sure that you top stitch along the binding when it's just one single panel prior to attaching it to the back. I'm gonna fix it. I'm just going to do the smush and stitch <laughs> and hope for a straight line across. I'm gonna manhandle this. So now this is good and closed. So you're gonna stick your hand inside. I'm going to make an arrow looking thing and I'm going to splay open the seams. The biggest thing here is to make sure that your seams are lining up. And don't worry if it's not exactly straight and you have some dog ears, you can kind of... Well, oh, that's gonna be fun to clean up. <laughs> okay. Just wanna make sure you're trying to get a straight line. Draw a quarter inch line. Then I'm going to press it in half again. I'm going to have the zipper tab right sides facing up. I'm going to place the zipper end on the side and just stitch the zipper tape facing down. So it's right sides facing each other. Okay, so just so you can see my stitching line just starts at the edge of the zipper tape and stops at the end of the zipper tape. You just want to make sure that you've caught both sides. Okay, so at this point you're going to leave your lining the wrong side out. You're going to take your main exterior panel and turn it the right side out. Much easier if you just were <laughs> run to the bathroom and warm it up with a hairdryer. So now you're going to take the lining and drop it inside of your finished exterior. And so you should have an exterior that is nice and fitting into the bag. It's not too saggy. Lay open the sides and that's what I meant when I cut the seam allowance wider at the top. Just lining up the seams. I'm gonna start it off on the back side. So with the right sides facing each other, I'm gonna clip the top edge of the binding to the top edge of the bag and clip it. Okay, so I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch along the edge. Again, I'm going to be performing the smoosh and sew because I don't have that free arm of a sewing machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch from the inside. I'm going to stop well before the end of this binding and I'm going to show you why. Back stitch, and I'm going to press back and just finger press it. Go up and butt it up to where you folded and fold that side as well. And press, finger press it like so. And this is just going to give you a guideline. Then you know, pick it up and you will match the two edges, press lines, and stitch on the press line. Trim the excess tail off. You'll press that open, finger press it. 
You're gonna pick up your stitching and complete the stitching line. Put a marking about half an inch from the seam on either side. Start on the opposite side. You're going to be setting in the zip right side up. You're going to take the zipper end and bend the little corner away so that you get a 45 degree angle. And you're going to clip it in that way. And then you're just gonna rotate and clip. And you're going to put it right there and clip it. And work your way back. Put your last clip where your marking is. At this point, you can just take your zip and flip it inside so it's out of your way like that. You're going to go around and bring up your binding and the binding is ready to be flipped up. I'm going to take it and press it facing up to get a nice clean finish. And you're going to tuck it once in so that the raw edge is meeting the top edge and flip it again, encasing, let's see if you can see it, encasing the zipper tape edge and clip it. Some say love is a winding road Cars a man through the darkest night well, it took me a minute to design this little pouch. I hope that you enjoy and make lots of pouches like this. I think I can throw yarn in there. So then I can take this and I'm ready to go. And remember that if you mess up, just stick with it. I look forward to seeing you again. Happy sewing. Well, why not? We got all three of them in here now. You're all being good. With me today, I have Chelsea. She's my little sausage. <laughs> you may hear her in the background snoring. This is my Nikita, she's my young German Shepherd. And then we have Rocco, my big German Shepherd that's 10 years old. Oh, whoa, whoa. Rocco, you okay? <laughs>